So the next part of today's lesson looks at the client. So when we have client server communication, we have a server that's typically located in the cloud or in some central location, and it responds to requests from the client or a client or clients. And this can be lots of clients. You imagine, you know, there are some small number of servers serving up, you know, some popular website and then many, many more clients that are actually making requests and retrieving the information that they need to view that site. Same thing with any sort of application that's used on your phone. Um, so we talked previously about the server, right? The server is the source of truth about the data. So you might ask like, why not just send like per, build the data right into the client, right? But the problem is a lot of times servers are in a position to know about changes to things. So for example, if this was a real app and we were gonna maintain it, restaurants come and go, you know? They, they appear and then they disappear. And so periodically what we would do is our client would request a list of restaurants from the server and the server would be in charge of making sure that list is updated. So you don't want to have an app that needs to update itself. Like imagine if the app had to, you know, uh, upgrade every time the list of restaurants change, that's not, that's not feasible, right? So instead what we do is we say, okay, you know, periodically the app will request the information from the server, but the rest of the app is the same. So it's really just the data that changes, you know? Um, and so now we're going to look at the, the client side code. Um, so we talked a little bit about why we use callbacks as part of networked programming, which is that, you know, network requests can take a while and we don't want to have to wait for them to finish. So it's like when you call up to, you know, a help site and it's really busy, rather than sitting there on hold where you can't really do anything else, they say, we'll call you back once the spot's available. And you put the phone down, you can do other things, and then they notify you. So that's the pattern that we use when, when working with uh, network requests. So just like we did with server.java, understanding our client code. So the client code is the code that would actually normally run on the app. So the server is a little out of place here. The server code would normally run in the cloud. It would be part of a separate project. We've snuck it into the app because I wanted to give you the chance to do this style of full stack, sometimes they call it app development, where you both write the client and the server and you see how they interact with each other. But the client would normally be part of the app. So this is normal Android code that we're looking at now, rather than something that's a little strange and out of place. Um, so let's look at the code. And just like we did for the server, the important part of being able to complete this next test case is understanding the client code that we've already provided. So I'm gonna open up my MP2 test suites I've finished, so first of all, if, if, you're, uh, if your server route doesn't work, don't bother working on the client. The client's not gonna work until the server works. So my server route is working, I wrap that up. I'm uh, moving on to the next test case, which is called test client get preferences. I'm gonna run that test uh, and I'm not going to expect it to work because I haven't written this code yet. So just like we did with the server, we're gonna focus on understanding existing code that we provided in client.java. So when we stubbed out our methods for uh, MP2, we added a method called get preferences, but it's empty right now, essentially. And so what we need to do is understand uh, a similar method, which is called get restaurants. And as always, we've tried to make this code as clear as possible, and we've tried to include comments that explain things. But here's what we do. So we're using a built-in networking library provided by Android called Volley. And Volley allows us to formulate a request and then it handles making the request and some of the mechanics involved as well as any, uh, you know, and, and then, you know, it's our job to kind of figure out what to do with the data once we have it. So let's look at our get restaurants method. You'll, and so this is one of the places where things get a little weird. Um, and a little new for us. So what is this returning, or sorry, what is this taking as a parameter? So what this accepts as a parameter is a callback function. Notice that when the method completes, I call callback.accept. Now this callback is something called a consumer. So this is a built-in interface in Java. It's a functional interface. Uh, it's a built-in interface in Java that allows you to provide a method that receives a, uh, a, uh, some data when the callback is complete, right? So when we call this callback, when we call accept, you notice that we're passing a list of restaurants. So this says 
This is a consumer. It consumes a list of restaurants. When uh, Get Restaurants completes, when the network uh, call is complete, what's going to happen is I'm going to call the callback and I'm going to pass it the list of restaurants that I retrieved from the server. If I go over to my main activity, uh, you'll see in my onCreate method that this is what gets done here, right? I call uh, get restaurants and I pass a callback method and that callback method is what runs uh, when, uh, when the list of restaurants is available. So essentially I make the request, it's almost like over here in client.java, this is making the call to get the list of restaurants. It calls up the server and says, hey, I want the list and then goes back to doing other things. And at some point later, the server responds and at that point I call the main activity back and I say, here's your list of restaurants that's provided at that point. Okay, um, so let's look at the code in here uh, more carefully. Essentially what this, what this method does is it constructs a request and then it runs the request by adding it to this request queue. And you can use very, very similar code as part of your get preferences method. And you should, this is another case where your goal is to mimic the code that we've already provided while making a few changes as needed. So let's talk about what happens here. So this is something that's called a string request, which means that we expect to get a string back from the server. The request method is get. So if you remember when we talked about server.java, we talked about the fact that we're using the HTTP protocol and a get request expects to retrieve data. It, pass, it uses a path, the URL, which is right here. So we're requesting this restaurant's route. Now you might ask, where's the slash? If you look at server.url, let's see, if I go to uh, declaration of usages, it has a slash at the end already. So that's why that's there, right? That's why there's no slash that I had to add here. Now, my request actually itself receives two callback methods. It's like callbacks inside callbacks. So one of them, this one runs on success. So it's possible that this request, this network request will fail. It might fail because the server doesn't know about this route or it might fail because the network isn't available. Like what happens if I make the network request and the, the phone isn't connected to the internet right now? So I need to be able to handle failure. Um, so I have two callbacks, right? This top callback runs if the call succeeds. Now, if the call succeeds, what's passed here is a string. So if I look, uh, type over this, that's a string, right? It's a string request, and so on success, what's passed to the callback is the string of data that was retrieved from the server. And this really is just a string, right? We know that the string contains JSON because we wrote the server. Whenever you have client-server communication, not only do they have to agree about the protocol typically, but they also have to agree about something about the structure of the data that's being exchanged. So we know this is JSON because we wrote the server, or we worked with the people that wrote the server. And we also know that it's a list of restaurant objects. And so this little piece of, you know, kind of magic, you know, is what we, uh, how we deserialize that, right? So you don't do this by hand. You use Jackson to do this for you. Uh, Jackson will be able to deserialize this into a list of restaurants. So we're expecting a list of restaurants. We deserialize it. And then we call the callback method. And what happens is at that point, I end up back in main activity and I save the list of restaurants and then I update my list, right? So that's how that works. Um, now, if something goes wrong, what we do is we call the callback with null. Now there are, as the comment hints, better ways of handling errors here, but they get into somewhat more advanced programming patterns that we don't really want to get into, right? This is like advanced enough, right? This is complicated enough for people who are just getting started. So we're, we're good with that. And we're all just getting started. It's complicated enough for me, right? Um, and so we're not gonna talk about kind of the right ways to handle error. Instead, what we'll do is we'll say on error, we return null from the callback. Um, so all this code does, this whole big chunk of code, it doesn't actually run anything. It just sets up the request. It essentially tells Volley, our networking library, what to do. And then down here, we actually queue and run the request, right? So you queue it up and Bali is in charge of taking it and running it and doing the right thing with the results. If the response succeeds, then this code will run and this code will then pass the data back to whoever called it. If there's an error, then this code will run 
right? And I expect to get null back. Okay, um, let's let's go ahead for fun. Let's go ahead and trace this, right? Because I, I want to, I want you to get a little bit of a sense of the order of operations here, right? Uh, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do log dot uh, D and I'm going to say, uh, call this trace. I'm going to have to import log, I guess. Right. Okay. So the first thing that's going to happen is I'm going to say making network, uh, I'll say calling get client because, because this is tricky to understand the order, right? Okay. So I call, I'm calling get client uh, or sorry, I'm calling, uh, get restaurants. Then in my client code, I'm going to put a message here. I'll do log.d. I'll call it trace. Um, and I'll say um, creating restaurant request. Um, okay, so that's the next thing that's going to happen. Now, the request is going to be queued. I just want to, I, I, I want to put these uh, log messages in some places that will help us develop some intuition about what's happening because it's, it's, it's complicated, right? We're used to our code running top to bottom. And when we start using callbacks, it's not what happens, right? Things, things run in an order that might surprise you. Uh, so I'll say queuing requests down here. Um, and then I'm going to add a couple of other log messages. So uh, I'll say request succeeded. And I'll put a log message here. And then I'll go back to main activity um, and I'll do log.d trace uh, received rest list of restaurants. All right, so you might um, you, you might ask yourself, uh, and then I'm going to put um, I'm going to see down here. I'm going to put log.d trace uh, main activity continuing. So you you might ask yourself as kind of a fun exercise. What order do you think these log messages are going to be displayed? If you can answer that question, then I have a pretty good sense that you understand callbacks and, and, and how they work. But I suspect many of you are going to be surprised by this. Okay, so let's go ahead and, and run our app. Um, and I'm going to open up my logcat tab. And I will look for trace here. I'm going to hit run. Um, ooh, let's see here. I guess, do I need to? Okay, so it's starting my emulator, good. Uh, wait for this to, to fire up. I should have done this earlier. Probably gonna take like five minutes now. I have to sit here and let's see here. Okay, so the emulator's starting. Of course, there are always like 6,000 error messages um, when the emulator fires up. I'm waiting to see, there we go, okay. Ah, okay, so let's, let's, Let's see what happened. And, and then you can see the UI updated, right? Okay, so what order did they did they run it? So the first thing that happens is I hit call and get restaurant. So I started in on create. Um, the next thing that happens is get restaurants runs and I'm on inside the client code and I see creating request restaurant, restaurant request and queuing request. Now the, you know, the main activity continues running. So I don't see this printed yet. And this is another, time where callback methods, you know, they, they really um, sort of expand our intuition about when our code runs, right? Callback methods are all about kind of adjusting when our code runs to meet certain situations. So rather than running in order, this code in the callback method is not going to run until we have the list of restaurants retrieved from the server. So now if I go over here to client.java, you're going to see uh, that I'm going to see, uh, I see request succeeded. Um, and then it's only at that point that I see received list of restaurants. So I start, I make the request, it's queued by volley, then it succeeds at some point, and then only at that point, because I call the callback, am I end up back in the main activity. If you want to have a little bit more fun, you might, I might encourage you to add code to the server as well to understand a little bit more about exactly what happens because you'll also see the server running. You'll see the server receiving the request, you know, returning information, right? So, you know, the client makes the request, the request gets formulated by Volley, gets queued. At some point, the server gets it, returns information. Volley runs the callback on the request, which parses it in this case into a list of restaurant objects, and then that gets passed back to the callback, right? So these, these callback methods that allow us to respond to certain things finishing, 
cause our code to run in, in an order that we might need, might take some getting used to. Okay, so you know your, your goal on this part of the, you might, this might feel a little bit intimidating, but this is another place where we've given you starter code that will get you a good chunk of the way there. So you can take the uh, get restaurants method, make some small changes to it, and get that to work for your get preferences method, and that will get you one step farther down the field. And hopefully along the way, you'll understand a little bit of the code that we provided here and, and what it's doing.